Hey, I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics and I'm here on site in Hampshire uh, in the process of building a pond, a water feature. Now this is three days into the project. There was a pond already in position, a small, a small preformed fiberglass pond which has been taken out. And the area has been excavated and, and dug out. And I wanted to show you really um, the way that I like to put ponds in. Um, the design and the, the method of the construction that, that goes behind it because the excavation is pretty much the most important aspect of, of building a pond. So when I'm digging out a pond and excavating I like to build various levels and, and terraces. From a wildlife point of view they like to save lots of shallow sections. Uh, shallow water can be very fertile, great for plants, allows lots of light to penetrate through the water. Um, from the fish point of view, they want to have a, a deeper section where they can hide away and get some refuge from herons and other predators. So I'm digging out a pond, I like to build different zones, different depths. So in this example, we've got a very shallow section here which is going to tie in with the cobbles in the garden. So we're going to have an area of, of cobbles flowing into uh, a very shallow beach section. And then it will drop down to a slightly deeper area. 15 to 18 inches deep here, where there can be a few deeper water marginals, some pygmy water lilies, things like that. And then a much deeper section here, which is about two feet deep, which is a, a better refuge for the fish to hide away. Um, perhaps a deep water lily or two in there as well. Now up in the corner here, you can see that I've got the, the beginnings of a, a cascade. I've got a nice natural spill stone here. And the idea is that there's gonna be a nice natural fall um, also a convenient way of returning water from a filtration system that I'm going to include in this project as well. It's important that if you've got a nice pond, you want it to, to be an attractive feature. Now the next stage of this project is to put in um, a pond underlay, some fleece which is to protect the pond liner and the main pond membrane itself. Now usually I'd perhaps put down a layer of some, some soft sand, some builder sand as well just to prepare the ground to get rid of any lumps and bumps and, and stones etc. Here actually the ground is, is pretty good, it's a, a pretty sandy um, substrate so it doesn't need an awful lot of preparation, just uh, two or three layers of some nice thick pond fleece. What's very important though is that before any lining and fleece goes down, by hand um, you run your hands over the surface to feel for any obstructions, any lumps and bumps and stones and, and roots particularly. Now in this hole there's a lot of roots from the trees behind um, so I'm going to spend a long time with a pair of secateurs just trimming away. So bits and pieces sticking out like this could potentially cause a, a puncture in a pond liner so all these areas need to be trimmed back and I'll put some sand over this um, and then a few layers of fleece obviously to, to completely fill the hole but there's lots of these little roots that are sticking out and really the only way that you're going to find these is by feel so I should be running my hands over the entire area of this pond um, and trimming back anything which I think is going to protrude and cause a, a potential problem. So the hole has been fully excavated, all of the sharp roots and objects have been trimmed back and removed and the next job is to put in the pond fleece underlay which is the protective layer uh, and then the main pond liner. So I'm adding two or three layers of this white pond fleece. This is a heavy duty 250 gauge, which is a really tough, durable fabric and it's going to help prevent roots and sharp objects from coming through and, and uh, causing any hazards for the lining. Uh, it's rock proof, it's going to last the, the lifespan of the, the pond liner. And the pond liner is only as good as the preparation that goes into the ground. So if you've got a really expensive, you know, heavy gauge rubber lining, you haven't bothered preparing the ground properly, it's not going to be any better than a cheap PVC lining. So it's really worth paying special attention to this stage of the job. Preparation is, is key here and really important. So lots and lots of fleece. People do use carpets, carpet underlay. It's better than nothing. I've even seen newspaper, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, but certainly I would, I would definitely do the, the dedicated pond fleece. And it's not particularly expensive stuff, so it's, it's well worth doing properly. Don't worry, at this stage, if there's too many creases, this is obviously going to be hidden by the main pond liner and the weight of the water is going to push out and, and uh, reduce any obvious creases. A few careful pleats and folds here and there just make it a little bit tidier and hope that you don't do this on a windy day because there's nothing worse than spending ages getting this laid out nicely and then a gust of wind ruins it all. I'm 
adding the main pod liner on top of the fleece now. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to take out every single crease now whilst it's dry and it's very difficult to do um, and there's no need to. In fact the best way to, to lay the pod liner if you've got the space to do so is to open up the sheet and to raise it off the bottom slightly Put a few stones around the edge to add a little bit of tension and start to fill and use the weight of the water to pull the liner down and to fill and to hug all of the contours of the hole nice and neatly. Um, as you start to fill you can start to pleat and fold certain areas to make those nice and neat um, and I'll show you that as I'm, as I'm doing so. Now to speed things up a little bit rather than fill directly from the tap I've got a, a little bowser here full of water which I'm going to start to pump into the into the pond and that will just speed things up a little bit. So that's the pond liner in preparation ready to start filling. I've stretched it out over the excavation and as I say it's raised off of the bottom um, with a few stones just to weigh it down and I'm going to start to, to fill this now and let the weight of the water take the liner down. So I've added a little bit of water to the pond which is weighted down the liner and taking it down into the excavation and I'm now starting on the on the terrace on the shelf level to add a few rocks to tension the liner and to pleat and fold. There has to be folds in pond liner but you can do them nice and neatly and when you've got corners and edges like this it's always advisable to put a, a sort of a fold or pleat here by, by tucking in one side and tucking in the other and then when you've got the weight of the water in here this is, is barely going to be noticeable. I'm not concerned about any creases around the edging because that's all going to be concealed beneath stonework. So I'm just focusing at the moment on making sure that the, the visible section beneath water is going to look as, as neat as possible. So as the pond's filling, you'll naturally get crease lines in certain areas and I'm just carefully folding and pleating weighing down with some stones here to ensure that those folds are nice and tight up against the edge of the pond. And I'll fill up to the left of the shelf and then I'll stop filling and I'll start to tension the area behind this by putting some, some weighted stones on the, on the bank side of the side. So that's the pond temporarily filled and I've filled it right up to its maximum to ensure that the lining um, fills the excavation nice and neatly. My next job now is going to be to drain it back down to the lowest level that I'm going to start to build stonework on. Uh, and for the rest of the job there'll be a certain amount of water left in the pond to keep the liner down and to stop it from moving. And I will start to build up from the, the lowest point upwards. It's been a few days since I've posted anything new with regards to this pond, the weather's not been that great. So we're fast forwarding about a week further on into the build, and I wanted to show you a few of the features of the pond now it's empty. So since the last video clip, most of the rock work has been done. You can see I've sort of kept the, the levels of the, the border that runs around the garden, and I've tied that in with the stonework that forms the sort of the rear structure of the pond, and then that carries on around the garden as, as a raised bed. So it gives it a bit of symmetry. There's not a huge amount of room in the back here in the corner for a, for a big cascade with lots of tiers. It would end up too high and look quite unnatural. So again, I've tried to keep it relatively flush with, with ground level. And we're gonna have about a sort of a four to six inch drop onto the pond, which will be plenty for a nice sound of water. And there was a nice big flat stone for that. So that was ideal. You can see the shallows here, which are gonna become part of a beach area that will flow into the rest of the cobbles that continue around the garden, as the whole garden is, is cobbled rather than lawned. And as it's empty now, you can just see the different levels. So this beach area here is going to be, again, sort of four to six inches deep of water. It's an ideal habitat for wildlife. A wildlife pond, um, it's very important to have lots of shallows. It's very easy when you're doing a beach though, even if it's been dug out with a very gradual incline, that these cobbles will end up falling into the pond and you'll end up exposing pond liner. So all around the edge here, I've built a retainer, very simply, um, a concrete mix but using sharp sand and small cobbles rather than ballast um, and then once it's almost gone off you can sort of rinse the top layer off get a brush brush all that cement off and it reveals the the cobbles and when this is underwater and covered in algae it'll blend in with the rest of the cobbles but it provides a nice retainer to stop this lot from slipping in further down into the pond 
We've got a slightly deeper second layer here, which is going to be about sort of 15 inches, 18 inches underwater. Um, and that's going to be an ideal place for a small uh, pygmy water lily or a small water lily that will go in there. None of these plants are going to be in baskets. They'll be bare rooted directly into the, into the gravel and the stones. Uh, so they'll be allowed to grow naturally. And these contained areas will help to contain the plants and stop them from, from going too mad. All the nooks and crannies that you get in the stone block here are an ideal habitat for frogs and newts. So I've deliberately kept areas free like this to create more habitat for wildlife. And again, all the way around the pond, you can see that although the stonework is rendered in, I've raked out a lot of the render, left lots of nooks and crannies. So there's plenty of hidey places for wildlife. We've got the deepest section of the pond down here. And overall, this is probably gonna be two feet, maybe a fraction more once it's filled up. You can see the, uh, the hose here. This will be the inlet hose to the filtration system. The pump will be on the end of this. There's enough slack on the hose to enable the pump to come out onto the side for maintenance. That's important. Um, yes, it might be aesthetically nicer to have a shorter piece of hose, but maintenance needs to be considered. Um, and this can be easily concealed with a few water lilies and some plants. You'll see under the spillstone here, another, another pipe, another outlet. Now this is a bypass, I've, I've incorporated that um, so that if one wants to switch off the cascade for any reason, um, if you're going away on holiday for example, a bit of peace of mind, it's nice that you can bypass the cascade but still continue to run the filtration system. So there'll be a valve buried in the ground close to the filtration system which will be buried up here somewhere and that will allow one to be able to turn off the waterfall and divert all of the water back down into the pond here. And then underneath the on top of the spillstone here underneath the stones you can just see two outlets um, to reduce the pressure of the, um, the pump because there isn't a top pond or a header pond up here which will reduce the pressure and sort of flow over naturally. By putting a twin outlet pipe on here again with a series of valves I can calibrate and control the flow to make sure that it flows over the stone nicely and, and doesn't sort of pour over in, a, in an unnatural kind of gushing forceful way. So that's it at the moment I've got to give it a final clean raise the soil level behind the cascade there, um, dig all the pipe work into place. I'm using a, a heavy duty suction hose rather than the sort of typical flexible super flex. This stuff is a little bit more durable, um, not quite as flexible, but certainly a lot more durable. And when you're burying pipe work and you're rendering pipe work in place, it pays to, to use really durable hose. Um, the filtration tank I'm going to use an Awaza filter clear pressurised system that will be buried in the ground and that will go in over here close to the electrics, accessible but it will be planted up in front so it's discreet. Um, so we've got a few finishing touches to go. Hi there, Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics, just another update on the pond. Uh, I've completed it now, a few weeks further on to the job and I just thought I would show you around uh, some of the features. So when you're doing jobs like this, it's always the last few days where everything really comes together and it's the, the final dressing, the trimming of the pond liner, concealing all of the man-made equipment and then finally dressing the pond with the plants that, that makes the huge difference. And towards the back here, we've got lots of various evergreen shrubs that are going to provide a bit of height just to conceal the fence. It wants to be reasonably low maintenance because access isn't particularly easy here, although one can walk around on the stonework either side there and if needs be, stick your wellies on and get into the pond. Access for the pump is also important. Um, you can just see I've got a little hook attached to the side of the, the pond here with a string tethered to it so you can lift up the pump without having to get into the pond. As part of the construction, I was talking about a bypass so we can turn off the cascade but continue to run the filtration. And I've got a series of a couple of valves here. The first one is the bypass so we can turn off the waterfall and continue to run the filtration 
and the second Y valve here is so we can do some final tweaks on the flow coming out of the, the cascade. This is a, a Waza Aquamax 8500 Eco Pump and I'm not using 100% of the flow over the spill stone. We've got some water coming over the cascade and some water entering the pond via the, via the bypass. Over here is the Awaza filter clear unit in operation. So again, it's concealed, but it's accessible. Some of the plants will need to be kept in check um, in the future to make sure they don't get too overgrown, but it'll, it'll conceal this area. Um, backwash conveniently, we've got a nice large border here that we can discharge all of the mucky water into. So that's the complete job. Another satisfied customer. On to the next one.